Our next performer, our next performer wanted me to let you know that he is the oldest performer by what he thinks is at least 20 years. Please welcome Mr. Tony Bates. Okay, thank you very much. I didn't want you to know that. Um, friends, we are doomed if we don't stop spoiling our kids and making them soft. You parents have to toughen up. I heard a radio ad recently for one of those temporal lobe thermometers that you sweep across a child's head to take their temperature. And the woman in the ad, the mother says, it's the only thermometer my three-year-old will let me use. Are you kidding me? Everybody knows the best way to take a child's temperature is with a rectal thermometer for two reasons. One, it'll give you the most accurate reading. Two, it's a great way to show them who's boss. <laughs> so that when they're 10 years old and they say, I'm sick, I don't want to go to school. You can say, oh really? You do look feverish. Maybe I should take your temperature. They'll be on that school bus faster than you can say Vaseline. <laughs> we give kids things that weaken them. If you go to a playground nowadays, you see kids playing on uh, brightly colored equipment with rounded plastic corners. Everything's set down low, a nice soft pine bark mulch on the ground. Nobody gets hurt. They're not going to learn anything that way. <laughs> we didn't have any of that stuff when I was growing up. We had what we called monkey bars and the teacher's called Darwin's Selector. 15 feet high, steel, anchored in concrete. Now, concrete begins with the letter C, and if you fell onto the concrete, you had the choice of three other C words, compound fracture, concussion, or coma. It was awesome. Speaking of natural selection, um, does anybody over 40 here remember playing lawn darts? Okay. We used to call that game the quick and the dead. For those of you under 40, this is how it worked. You take a bunch of 10-year-old kids and send them into the backyard, unsupervised, where we throw 14-inch metal-tipped darts at each other's feet from 20 yards away. In slow motion, it looked like this. We were always just one errant throw from turning little Bradley Taylor into Vlad the Impaler. It was awesome. Um, we didn't have all these things to protect us. We didn't have child guard caps on the medicine bottles, didn't have uh, bicycle helmets, car seats. We didn't have seat belts until 1970. And then your parents didn't make you wear them if you sat in the back. We had a mosh pit going back, going on back. Hey! My mother would get a plaintive cry from the back seat. Mommy, this buckle's digging into my back. Well, shove it down the back of the seat. They roll up the window, you're letting out the smoke. Remember? In 1960, parents did not baby-proof the house. Instead, they invoked fear. It was cheaper. As soon as I could walk, my father marched me over to the kitchen sink, opened the cabinet below, and said, A, B, C, D, son. Ammonia, bleach, comet, and Drano. The four horsemen of your apocalypse. If any of that stuff touches your lips, you'll die a slow, painful death. And if you don't die, I will kill you and tell God it was an accident. Well, I got you here. This is a 110 volt electrical outlet. If you stick paper clips, bobby pins, or knitting needles in those holes, you'll be shocked so badly you'll end up like your Uncle Jimmy. That's right, he was a mechanical engineer and now he has a lazy eye and mows lawns for the town. And you will be so grounded. That's my time, I'm Tony Bates, thank you very much. Tony Bates.